We're here at Diamond Age 3D. They've got a ton of homes under construction, printing behind us, getting the roof on, smoothing out the walls, and even completed finished homes. We're going to meet some homeowners, the Century team, and all kinds of participants at this incredible 3D printed construction site. You guys are going to get to see a little piece of construction history today as we check out the Diamond Age construction in Casa Grande, Arizona. I'm here with Nate, the new homeowner of this Diamond Age printed home. Nate, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Thanks for letting me stop yeah. by today. What made you decide to pull the trigger on a 3D printed house? So we were in the market for a uh, brand new house and uh, we looked at old conventional stick and wood and uh, realized uh, that, you know, we couldn't quite, we were looking for something newer. So uh, realtor turned us on to this. Uh, we looked at the model, immediately fell in love with it and I put offer in the same day. Wow, that's incredible. And yeah. so far, how has your experience been? Or what are the electric bills like? Uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, we just turn the air conditioning on a little bit in the morning. Mm -hmm. the, the house keeps that cold in during the summer. Wow. Electricity has been uh, maybe a third of what we were paying at a two-bedroom apartment we were had down in Chandler. That's incredible. Yeah, we've, we've been able to watch them every single day. It's been a wonderful experience. Yeah. Wonderful. It's not even too loud. Most construction sites would be a lot more noise, yeah. stuff banging around. Uh -huh. These guys started about 5 a.m. We don't hear them. Wow. We, we wake up and we're like, did they even start working? We walk out the back patio. These guys are in full progress. So cool. Thanks again, Nate. Yeah, you're very welcome. Hey, thanks for coming by. Makeup. Where's my makeup? Hey, I'm Russell Verone, CTO and co-founder of Diamond Age 3D. So they're, uh, what are they working on? They're working on, looks like, layer six on this house. So we've got a, we've got a skinny crew over here. A um, couple of guys working. You'll see laying down, how, um, laying down layers. And batch plant mixes, so you know the, the the best way to make money is to buy things cheap, right? So we buy rock, we buy sand, we buy Portland cement. Uh, we have our additives, and uh, we do all the mixing on site. This is actually our first machine. So this machine was built in 2020. Um, we built this in California. We did our demonstration house here. What we're seeing is they're just extruding concrete segment by segment. So we go discrete. We don't uh, we don't do the continuous pathing that other folks do. We find that it's better to keep micro batches running. We do small couple of cubic foot batches and we just extrude them all day long. But you'll hear the tones. This is our first generation positioning system. So that tone is asking the tool tender to confirm that we're in the right position. The tool tender will check it's in the right position. The machine will take a measurement. You'll see the machine offset in a second. Once it's got its measurement, you'll get a second tone and then he'll release it to print. So right now it's this pretty heavy human in the loop and the house across the street is our next generation software where there's no human in the loop on that. So you'll see he confirmed it, said it's okay to print. There's a bunch of live measurement going on so I'm not sure exactly how other folks do it but I know that you know from standard 3D printing you're just following a GCO file and, and hitting all those points. We're actually measuring for solar thermal um, expansion, we're measuring for wind sway, we can counteract that. We correct positioning about 20 times a second with a custom system that we built. So we, uh, we just felt that out in the elements, um, when you start carrying heavier tools, like this is a, a multi-use system. It just doesn't have the print head. We roll trusses with this. We use cutting systems with this. So a lot of torque, a lot of heavy loads. And um, you know, if you try to stand large distances and carry heavy loads without a compensation system, you really can't control your positioning. So we, uh, we invented and patented a bunch of stuff that, that you're seeing right now. When we get to top plate height, which you'll see machine number three, we'll get there today. We'll start post-tensioning in a day or two after we get all the top plates on. So that actually pulls the entire wall down to the foundation and puts the whole concrete structure in compression. Uh, the post-tensioning is a cable, so it's just a stainless steel aircraft cable. It's a, it's a product um, that's in the building code already. The only thing that goes in this wall is waterproofing which is just a cementitious waterproofing and foam. To be able to stack like this and not worry about layer to layer bond, not worry about plastic shrinkage cracking, not worry about any of those typical things that is just the nature of concrete, you've got to put it under tensioning. So this is a vertical post tension system. We're in front of a 1,656 square foot floor plan. That's three beds, two baths, two car garage. Doing some exterior stucco and some interior plaster. Let's show you what we've got. So the plaster on this wall was shot by from five and it's covered by the roof guard? No. Roof trusses are put on automatically. Um, all of the roof trusses are put on automatically. Um, all of the vertical horizontal cuts for doorways, all the trim was done automatically. Um, foam is done automatically. Tensioning of the ties is semi-auto, so the tensioning system is pretty heavy and hydraulic, so that's usually carried by two or three people. We carry that around by the robot and, uh, and collect the data on that tension. Each tension, tension tendon needs 
to have its data recorded for uh, building code. So a couple different beds. Beds. Um, you'll see in here, this is the laundry room. So we leave laundry access. We'll put a, a nice bezel panel on that for the homeowner when we're finished, so if they need to get into it. But all of the plumbing meets code. All of our um, supplies are brought in vertically from the top. All drain waste goes down through the bottom. So nothing's, uh, nothing except drain waste is run under the slab. It's too expensive to run utilities under the slab. So we go up, typical truss package. So top plate up from where the wall ends. The house is, is very similar to what you're used to seeing. All of the fitments are all just general trade fitments. You can go to Home Depot and buy electrical boxes, drop them in here. You can go, you know, all of your plumbing, all utilities is just straight up a Home Depot shelf or trade supplies. This is a newer system. When you see them come back out the print, you won't hear any tones. All of this is uh, software controlled now on the layer application and the measuring and the correction of positioning. So that's our next generation software that we keep iterating on. Makes it a little bit faster. It makes it where the, the machine is actually, you have to trust your instrumentations, just like a pilot flying in weather, right? You trust your gauges. So we'll give you a chance, we'll bring you the control chili, let's let you see what the, uh, the guys who are actually running the field robotics operations guys, my frogs. Let them, uh, let them talk you through a little bit of what's going on in the control trailer. So we overprint. So you see this is overprinted? Yeah, and you get some fibers in there? Yeah, fibers in there. We'll overprint and then we'll come back and we'll cut this. And then we'll put bucks in so that you can use a traditional garage drawer. We'll span this with an engineered beam, right? There's no reason to do concrete printing across a 16-foot gap. So. Does the machine give you an as-built? Yeah. Yeah, we have all data on that. So if we have to replace a layer, if we have to replace a segment, we, uh, we keep all that data on the machine. So this is an 1,899 square foot plan or a 1,901, I can't remember. I see a half layer up there. Yeah. What's the deal with that? Um, height, right? Because all these slabs are, slabs are never level or plumb or square. So there's a couple of points in the house. Bottom of window height, top of doors, okay. and then top of house is the minimum we need to do. And then sometimes we'll do a leveling cut in the middle if we get too much variation while we print. So it's basically red brick. It's, a, it's, it's basically red brick and mortar. Okay. So this is dry stack. So we don't require any uh, layer inner layer bonding. So that's one of the unique things I think we're doing that no one else has kind of done yet. But again, that's part of our wall system patent. We try to cut as little as possible because I want to lay down. I don't want to take up, but you know, that's additive manufacturing, right? But at some point in time, if, uh, if the house throws you off, you just, uh, you just come in and trim it. It's a pretty quick process. You see that it takes about two hours this afternoon. You'll probably see that. My name is Patrick Han. Worked here for about uh, four and a half months. Originally came from the military. Uh, was a drone operator for about six years in the Army, and then uh, transitioned over to the Diamond Age. Uh, saw the applicability, saw the uh, future of what Diamond Age had to offer. Uh, definitely had quite a few benefits, a little bit less occupational hazard. Right now, currently looking at uh, the proprietary software that we have in-house. So on the right side, we have Cerebrit. On the left side, we have Hive. Uh, Cerebrit has essentially the master build order of how the house is supposed to be built from start to finish. All those tasks are essentially built into these scripts. Um, and all these scripts get sent over to the hive into the behavior tree and get executed step by step. As these steps are executed, um, you can see it all happen live, real time on the camera over here and then also on the gantry as we're extruding concrete. So one of the problems we see is that, yeah, you know, ex construction is an extractive industry, kind of mining extracts coal and steel, uh, iron from the ground. Construction extracts years and um, flexibility and pain from people's bodies. A lot of the things you do on a construction site, you're lifting heavy things, you're dealing with dirty things, you're breathing in dust, you have things that vibrate, and that really takes away from people, right? So you extract quality of life from people over a career, and you end up shortening the good years that people have. And I think that as we bring robotics into construction and build trust in those robotics, you'll see robots being um, used to replace that part of it, where people can do more thinking jobs, people can do more creative and fine detail jobs that don't take away from their quality of life and their longevity. I think that's a huge, huge benefit of automated construction. Then once that happens, you have robots common on job sites. You can re-engineer the product to be more designed for manufacture by robots versus designed for manufacture of people. You know, weight limits and size limits and things you can do with a person are entirely different than what you can do with either with a robot. This is an 1899 square foot floor plan. Uh, we started this one probably about 28 days ago, 29 days ago. So you're seeing just already, you'll see on the outside, we got a waterproofing done um, on the outside. And then on the inside, we're coming in ready to get ready for finish. So we'll get the roof dried in. Take a look at the top plates, the way we put the roof on. Um, 
Diamond Age and most 3D printing is usually just strange between the slab and the top plates of the house, so where the walls end. So we use typical trusses right out of the local truss plant, and then we, uh, we tie everything together so you'll see the galvanized clips holding the trusses to the top plates. Those are all H10A clips. Those are hurricane clips. Those are in the building code. Um, this is just how you would build a house down in Florida, down in Galveston, Gulf Coast. So one of the fun things for us is that as we expand, the house design doesn't have to change to meet different environments. This house will stand up in Minnesota, this house will stand up in South Florida, and uh, we really don't have to change the materials or the design of the house. My name is uh, Paul Zita. I'm the regional president for the Mountain Region uh, Century Complete Homes. And uh, we're here today to talk about Diamond Age. Uh, this is our model home. Uh, Diamond Age constructed this uh, with robotic technology, 3D printing. And we're gonna kind of walk you through it and give you the feel. Um, Diamond Age's whole thing is they build with robotics and automation but they build it like the house you grew up in. So they make it just like any other home you'd see. Um, one very, very big difference though, is these walls are concrete. Uh, these walls are concrete and insulated. Every single wall in the home, interior walls, exterior walls, everything gets a spray foam insulation. And it also has a post tension system to hold it down. Uh, that's really by D Diamond Age's construction method. Um, they require every single wall to be built that way. So not only is it strong, it's very, very energy efficient, and the noise transfer throughout the house is unlike anything you've seen in the market. Um, if you've ever had that bathroom that backs up to the living area of the home, you can hear the toilet flush, you can hear the water running, you're not gonna have that in one of the Diamond Age homes. They actually built it just like one of our Century Complete homes, and we try to make very little distinction between one of these homes and one of our century built homes besides the fact that this is built with again concrete. When you say that it's the same floor plan or indistinguishable completely? Same floor plan, there were some variations. If you notice the door openings here, they're very wide along with the window openings because we're actually almost at 10 inches. You've got two inches of concrete on each side with a nominal fill cavity for uh, plumbing, electrical, you name it, and the post tension system. And so once we widened out the actual plan, um, the square footage increased. Uh, this plan here is almost 1,500 square feet, it's 1,400, and it's a variation of our 1290 plan, so the floor out is actually the same, it just spread. Paul, thanks for letting me check out this completed Century home. So you guys have been exploring automation with Diamond Age Century, huge home builder in the United States. Do you think this is going to be expanding, and what do you think the future of automation is like with Century? I absolutely think it's going to expand. Um, you know, one thing I've always kind of talked about, I've been in the industry since I was a kid. Um, my dad worked for a home builder, got me a job right out of high school. And there's a lot of guys when I was starting out as a laborer detailer um, that are still in the trade base that are, you know, probably should have retired years ago. We don't have that influx of youth coming into the market. Um, probably the biggest thing facing, uh, you know, us as an industry is a labor crisis. And so when you think about that, that, that young people aren't getting into it, you know, things have to become automated, they have to become easier because we don't have the labor force to, to supply the demand. Yeah, it's actually, uh, it was my job before this too. I was ripping up tile, doing a little apprentice carpentry uh, and I didn't want to do that for very long. I started making videos, so it makes sense. Young people wanted to work with their minds, do engineering roles uh, and you guys seem to be all enabling that with technology. Yep, and uh, you know, the nice thing is, is um, people are, are worried that you know, this is gonna take over the job, but when you see the people out there, you're gonna see people doing work, you just see them doing it in a different fashion. Yeah. So we still need people. You know, Diamond Age is not gonna be 100% robotics, there's still a good portion of the house that's built by hand, but you take those people, you train them in a different way, you train them in a different way than they've seen, it becomes new, it becomes intriguing, and you get those young people in there that basically take us to those next step. 